I recently haven't been posting a lot because I've been busy studying for a certification, which I now have passed. And I this will allow me to pursue some different ventures, which may lead me to potentially traveling a lot more for work. And because of this, I, I've never really been a huge fan of sticking to one airline or limiting myself to a certain alliance because, you know, sometimes schedules just don't work out. An airline may not, and its alliance, may not go to a particular area very well, and I end up just going with different airlines. I mean, I this is the whole thing. Like, I don't want to arrive somewhere at like 6 a.m. in the morning because most hotels don't check you in, and after a long flight, you kind of just want to go to the hotel, relax a little bit, shower, brush your teeth, you know, just unwind a little bit. But, and I generally use like Chase Sapphire Preferred, which that's where I accumulate all my points. But, you know, I realized maybe it might not be a bad idea to try giving one of these alliances a chance. And after looking through the different programs and with the whole recent fiasco of Delta changing and their program making it infinitely worse and apparently fixing it or rolling it back because it was so bad. It kind of made me think a lot about these alliances. And quite frankly, they're very confusing. You got all these PQP, PQFs, and like different ways to earn points. And they don't really tell you. It's kind of based on spend. It's kind of based on miles. It's a mix of it. It's rather confusing, to be honest. And after looking at the programs, I did a quick Google search and like which program is easiest to get alliance. And one of them is like... Asiana, which apparently allows you to get two years to keep your to keep updating your status. So it's actually kind of makes it life a lot easier to get into a higher status. But realistically, after looking through the major alliances, uh, one of which is Star Alliance, uh, Sky Team, and One World, I kind of ended up because most of my flights have been with uh, Star Alliance, I kind of have gone with them. However, I think the other two alliances are pretty good, especially like if you went through American Airlines for one of them, they simplify their programs. So it's actually, it doesn't have any of the PQP and PQF stuff going on. But I, am, I guess I'm used, potentially going to use them as my secondary alliance. But for me, I personally chose the Star Alliance because I used a lot of the airlines that were in that alliance, and I have traveled extensively using those services. And on top of that, the other airlines rewards that I kind of use a lot is Southwest because, I mean, it's not really a perk, but it has its definitely has its benefit with like luggage, free luggage and flexibility. But these alliances are pretty confusing these days, and especially with the seat choice. Like, basic economy doesn't give you anything. I mean, basic economy was kind of created to compete with the ultra low budget airlines. So you kind of have to book like premium economy or anything above that. So I guess realistically, I think things that I consider was how comfortable the seat was, how easy uh, the schedules were to work with. And for me, who fly out of LAX, there's another consideration I do think about, and it's the position of the terminal. Terminal 1 and Terminal 7, I feel, are the easiest to get to because you don't have to sit through the whole loop of traffic. So I ended up going with them. Well, if you like my stories, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next week for a new episode. And safe travels.